Hey, I just wanted to let you know all of the footage you're about to watch was filmed at the Mesquite Sand Dunes in Death Valley National Park. When I was out there, it was a bright, sunny day, and I was filming using my Canon M50 with the Sigma 16mm EFM lens and this uh, Tiffin variable neutral density filter mounted on the front. Now I've never had problems with this variable ND before. I love the convenience of it when shooting video because then you can just reach out and turn it if you need to brighten or darken your exposure instead of having to go into your camera settings. It's, it's very convenient. But on this particular day, and I still don't know how this happened or why, um, but at some point the ND got over cranked. And on a variable ND like this Tiffin, there are no hard stops at the minimum and maximum value. So you can actually turn right past the maximum amount and just keep turning and go all the way back around to the minimum. And when that happens, and if you're not paying attention to this, when you're adjusting the variable ND, you can loop around kind of into this no man's land of where the variable ND should not be. And you get these crazy like light diffractions and you know, even that, that dreaded blue X that you may have come across if you've had experience with variable NDs. So, you know, I thought about just trashing all of the footage and just, you know, using it as a learning opportunity, but I decided to just, you know, fix it the best way I possibly could in post, just make it somewhat presentable because, you know, I, I feel like I captured a, a couple of good photos that day and I wanted to share those. And I wanted to, you know, share the experience of being at the Mesquite Sand Dunes in case anyone else is interested in going. You know, with this video, I fixed the problem the best way I could, but you know, there's no true solution. So anyway, just wanted to let you know uh, what was going on and why the footage looks weird in spots. So that's it. Enjoy the video. How's it going everyone? And uh, welcome to Death Valley National Park, specifically the Eureka, no, these aren't Eureka. These are the Mesquite <laughs> sand dunes. Eureka is another uh, field of sand dunes that you'll find here, Death Valley. I, uh, I just got here actually um, a little bit ago. I drove in probably about 20, 30 minutes ago and uh, got some gear, got myself put together. Got a uh, long sleeve sun shirt on. Got this really awful uh, boonie hat, which I think I talked about in my uh, Utah video. And this is a dune field that is kind of on the northern end of the park. And there's a couple of other dune fields here as well. There's um, the Eureka Sand Dunes, Ibex, and uh, Panamint Dunes as well. The Mesquite Sand Dunes are without a doubt um, some of the most popular, and it's not because they're the best dunes, but it's because they're the most accessible. There is a, uh, a parking lot, like a paved parking lot that's just off of a main road over there. And it has, uh, you know, like vault toilets and all that kind of stuff, nothing fancy at all. Um, but then, I mean, you just park and you just start hiking uh, into the sand here. And of course, because this is popular, I mean, the dunes are just, I mean, they are just overflowing with footprints everywhere. You can see them just all along here, up the side there, this hill over here. There's a whole bunch of them up that way too. It's just because you get a lot of visitors here. So kind of like what I've talked about before, in another video about sand dunes, when I was at White Sands in New Mexico, you um, you kind of have to prepare for that and you have to work around the fact that it is a popular place because obviously for photography, you kind of want things to be, um, you know, somewhat uh, serene and you know, with these perfect dunes and these beautiful lines and these surfaces which haven't been disrupted at all. That's what you look for when you're shooting sand dunes in general, but it's, uh, it's kind of hard to do when you and a lot of other people come through here. But that's gonna come later, actually. Right now, it is about 10 o'clock in the morning, so the sun is, is up. It's a clear day, partly cloudy. I would guesstimate it's probably about 75 degrees right now. Absolutely perfect temperature to be out here in the day. 
So just over here, over my shoulder behind me, you can see up here on top of one of the dunes, there's someone else taking some photos. I think um, later on today when uh, sunset happens and then for sunrise tomorrow, I think this place is going to be especially popular. Lots of people with tripods. I was at a uh, Zabrinsky, I think it's how you pronounce it, Zabrinsky Point um, yesterday. And I mean, it's a great view over the Badlands of Death Valley, but at the same time, it was an absolute zoo. I mean, there were this like carloads of people showed up carrying tripods and they weren't just carrying any photo gear. I mean, these were like tourists carrying phase one medium format cameras. And, you know, uh, even, even someone had a, a vintage medium format with a digital back and some kind of a vintage lens on it too, some kind of manual focus vintage lens. And man alive, I mean, they were, there was a lot of expensive gear <laughs> out on that hillside, let me put it that way. So as I usually do, because the sun, you know, is, is super bright right now, it's pretty high in the sky, the shadows are pretty harsh, and I've never been here before, I decided that, you know, the best way to spend my time right now would be to just do an old fashioned scouting and um, kind of walk around, get the lay of the land, see where some of the better dunes are, uh, what I can expect once I'm coming back out here later when I'm carrying heavier camera gear and a larger tripod and all that kind of stuff. And uh, just get a feel for it. It's kind of what you, it's kind of what you have to do. I, I really do not enjoy just showing up at a location and, you know, dropping my tripod and just, you know, immediately start shooting without taking the time to actually look around and get a feeling for it and, you know, and look at it with your own two eyes, right? You know, just kind of look at it that way and forget about cameras and forget about gear for a bit and just focus on compositional opportunities and, uh, and then when you're ready, then you can come back and actually shoot it. By the way, I made a video about this recently. If you want to uh, learn more about how I do uh, location scouting, I actually use a mobile app for it when I'm out doing this. And, um, and then I'm able to use that app to come back and find places I've been to before really easily and kind of plan out my uh, objectives. So if you're interested in that, I'll link to it. All right, so it is later in the afternoon now. It is uh, probably about 2.30 in the afternoon and the sun is setting really quickly while we're out here. The sun is usually down by about five o'clock or so, which is a little bit earlier than what I'm used to. So my friends, Stephen and I, Stephen uh, Vincent Grace right over here. And now we're just trying to figure out what exactly to shoot out here because as I was talking about before, Pretty much all of the hills, especially the ones that are right up near the parking center and where the you know vault toilets are and all that kind of stuff, they're just absolutely overrun with footprints and and not just a few like manageable footprints that you could always you know finesse later in Photoshop, like dunes that have just been completely destroyed and there's just really no way to uh, capture them. So we're intentionally hiking deep into the back, getting away from where uh, most of the other tourists are and doing the kind of method that I've you know, picked up on the last time I tried dunes, which was to kind of start on the outside perimeter of where it is that you're wanting to shoot. Even if you have a particular subject in mind, like say these dunes, like out here in the distance, even if you want to get closer to them, take some time and shoot from a distance first and shoot some telephotos because you always want your footprints to be behind you and not in front of you. And if you do it in reverse, then you're just creating uh, more problems for yourself later to be dealing with. So, uh, Steven is pretty excited to be using his telephoto here. I'm excited. He is excited, folks. <laughs> yeah. So, we're just gonna keep hiking into these, seeing what we can find looking for some, some good shapes, some, some good lines. And then hopefully when the sun drops right back here, we're 
hopefully get some good light tonight because it looks like there's some nice, some nice clouds in the atmosphere that are hanging kind of low over here. And maybe the light will catch some of that and we'll luck out this evening. So otherwise, it's just a beautiful night in Southern California. So here's an image captured that evening at the Mesquite Sand Dunes in Death Valley National Park. Well, there are a few things in this photo that I would like to point out. First being uh, the light in the sky. The sun ended up doing exactly what I hoped it would do. It illuminated the side of those low hanging clouds and they just, you know, just burst with this color of this yellow and orange, which was perfectly in contrast to the tones of the, of the blue in the sky behind them uh, and to uh, the dunes below. You know, you get this really nice opposing color, you know, complementary color thing going on with the, with the yellow and the orange and the blue together. The other thing I want to point out is that over here on the left side of the dune, there are a couple of people standing here. And <laughs> I remember when I was out there taking this photo and I was just thinking, oh man, if only those people weren't there. Um, but you know, in retrospect, now that I'm looking at it and I'm able to see it up close and, and see it all together, I, I actually kind of like the people being in there because I think it brings a nice sense of scale to the photo because then you're able to look at it. And even though they're super small and you, you, know, and you may not notice them at first, once you do see them, you realize then just how massive this dune field is and just how you know, huge these dunes truly are. Um, and, and so I ended up just keeping them. And I think, I think the photo works a lot better with them in the photo than it does without. The next image was actually captured the following morning. We got up early and we hiked out into the dunes. And unfortunately, I had yet again more technical difficulties. On that morning, um, my mic either died or I forgot to turn it on. I don't know what happened, but the audio is pretty atrocious. So this next photo was created at sunrise. And this is one that, you know, we found, Stephen and I found this composition and when I when we came upon this this view, I mean, I just I just stayed right there. I mean, I just sat with the tripod and shot it a bunch of different times just to get just the right composition and field of view that I was happy with. And then I just waited for the light to get better and watched the sun come up and watch the the colors change. And I shot this right when blue hour was beginning to shift into golden hour because you still had some of that pink and magenta from uh, blue hour in the background and in the shadows. But then you can see on the on the right side of those dunes that golden light was just beginning to come up over the horizon. And so and so we started to get some of that reflecting off of the sand that was facing in that direction, which created some really nice lines um, in those dunes. This for me is I personally I prefer landscape photos that just are a little more atmospheric, a little bit moodier, a little um, you know, ones that just have a softer tone to them, I think. And, and that's part of the reason why I love shooting at blue hour and, you know, both early in the morning and, and in the evening. For me, it is just the best light. And, you know, sometimes golden hour light is too much for me. I, I like it when it's just like this. This is like, you know, the perfect kind of moment for me. So, this was, um, you know, I, I just love this composition. I love the image and the light and the color, and I think it just turned out fantastic. So now that I've experienced both uh, sunset and sunrise here at the uh, Mesquite Sand Dunes in Death Valley, I think sunrise is the way to go. The other thing I would recommend if you were to come out here to, to the Mesquite Sand Dunes, would be to definitely bring some kind of telephoto lens with you. This is a, you know, the Canon 70 to 200. You may be thinking that, you know, something like a uh, 24 to 70 would be sufficient for something like this. But once you get out here, at least in my opinion, you know, because these dunes tend to be so few and far between, and it is a rather laborious process getting from, you know, one, you know, dune ridge line to another, 
having a telephoto lens will you know, not only make it easier on you so you're not having to uh, hike as much, um, but it really helps uh, compositionally, especially with, you know, if you have like a really nice background, like some of these mountains back here, because then you're able, when you shoot them with a telephoto and you have the dunes in front, you get that nice telephoto uh, kind of compression where everything seems much tighter together, where the mountains in the background wouldn't seem quite as, as far as they might otherwise if you were shooting, shooting a dune with a wide angle up close. Obviously, it kind of depends on, on what you're uh, looking for, but as far as, you know, which lenses I've pulled out of my bag since I've been here, it's been all telephoto and 24 to 70. I've never needed anything uh, wider than a 24 millimeter here. So as far as this morning goes, I think uh, this is, I think that's about it. The, the sun is you know, getting higher and higher and the highlights are getting more and more blown out. So I'm gonna save my energy. I'm gonna hike back to my RV and uh, maybe have some coffee and look at the photos and see what worked and what didn't. So hey, thank you for joining me on this video. I appreciate you uh, clicking on this video and watching it and making it all the way to this point. If you are into uh, landscape photography and uh, gear and you know travel vlog videos and uh, reviews of camera gear, I do that some. I'm also planning on doing some photo processing videos coming up pretty soon. Feel free to hit uh, subscribe and to follow along on this channel. I would appreciate it. So, all right, awesome. I'll see you next time.